I'm gonna go ahead and grind up a shear tool. This is gonna be used for only finishing, making very, very light cuts across there. This will be my first shaper shear tool that I've ever made before, so we're gonna try it out. I'm going off of the book, and I do recall Mr. Pete showing one in a video a while back, but I haven't watched that since then. So we're gonna give it a shot, and if I have to, I'll continue to tweak the grind until we get the results that we want. It's gonna essentially be not a square nose tool but it'll have a very slight radius on it but it's going to have a very high helix angle so we're going to grind an angle across the cutting edge right there all right i'll i'll get the grind done and kind of give you a better shot of it so you can see what i'm talking about I think we may have it. So you have a high shear angle here. It's also a, a very slight radius on the bottom edge. So wherever it's touching on this radius is where your cutting is gonna be. Uh, one thing, I'm, I put a little bit of back rake on it, but we may need to come in here and grind a notch across there to increase the back rake. So let's try it like this. I'll do a little bit of hone in there to uh, smooth up the cutting edge and we'll give it a shot. All right, I got you in there with uh, the tool set ready to go. We just need to touch off and hopefully you can see what's going on there. So I'm gonna bring the tool down with the tool head and you can, somewhere near the, the center is where the contact point was gonna be. So this is designed for very light cuts. Uh, I'll have to play with the depth and the feed to see what kind of results we're gonna get. So let me move you back. We'll touch off and make a cut. Before I start that, I was going to show you. We'll go to the bottom of the, uh, you know, the parallel there. We have approximately 20 thousandths to come off of this to bring it to a six inch width. So it can be a little over. There it is. All right, I'm gonna start with a five thousandths. Oh yeah, there we go.
it's looking pretty good actually I think what I'll do is shut the door in case the concrete's blowing out the video and try to get y'all some better look at it Yeah, that's a nice finish. Nice and smooth. That did pretty good. Not bad for the first try. All right, so here's the result to our very first finish cut with uh, our shear tool, a very first shear tool. And I'm seeing some imperfections in the finish there. We've got some, you may see these lines in there. And I believe what that, what that looks like to me is that that was an area where we had buildup on the cutting edge there. And it dug in as it was coming across. The other issue that I think that I'm dealing with, this, the ends I have not cut yet, so I think it's got some hard spots on here that it may be trying to cut through when it comes in, and that's affecting the edge of the tool right there. So it's not bad, it actually feels really good. It's got a nice smooth feel, but you can definitely feel those lines in there from that tool bit. So I wanna go ahead and, since I've got the tool set up, I wanna go ahead and uh, finish out, finishing the four sides here and then we'll move on and get the ends of it cut. All right, that was our side we just cut right there. I'm just kind of giving a rough measurement to see where we're at on, on our size and our squareness. So that's getting about 614, 615. Six inch 15, so it seems to be pretty square. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do uh, these two sides now and get those squared up, finished in. So I did take that tool out. I ground the top of the tool. I felt a 
when I ran my fingernail across the cutting edge, I felt felt something catch. So it must have been part of the the cutting edge that chipped away. So I just ground the top down and I rehoned the edge. We'll see if that makes a difference. And we're only cutting ten thousandths off of it. All right, guys, we got all four sides cut in, so now it's time to do the bottom here, and then I'll flip it over and do the other side. Took the parallels out so that it sits down into the vise a little bit more. And by the way, I got the jaw indicated there, it just didn't show any of that. So we're gonna take this big machine square right here. And we're just gonna square it up by sight. Looks pretty good. All right, guys, we're ready to make a cut. We're going back to my uh, roughing tool. Got a fresh grind on it. I'm using this because I'm out of I'm out of room right here. So this was the best setup for me. I've got it touched off here, and I've got it fed down a sixteenth of an inch. I got approximately eighth of an inch to clean up right here. So I'm just going to take a sixteenth, and we'll just clean this up. Again, this credit this measurement is not super critical. Okay, this is just a nominal size of three and a half and right now it's about three and five eighths so let's let's get going on that's going to be we're going to do one cut and that's it i'm going to oil it up Twenty thousand step over let's do it I had to really drop it down to clear the ramways right there and we're I probably got about one more inch of travel if I wanted to go down anymore. There's the result of our cut on that side right there. Got the, the edges filed, cleaned off, and we're ready to flip this thing over and cut the other end down there. All right, change of plans. The uh, overall length on this right here was nine and a half inches, and we're actually right at it, nine and a half inches. So this, this being cut out here on this end is not critical because usually Usually what I do with these is I bandsaw a 45 degree angle on each one of these corners like that. Okay, our center hole for our pin is accurately located from the back. From here to the center is where we where we will measure for the hole. But using these calipers, we are right at nine and a half inches. See that? So we're just gonna leave that alone just like it is. And another thing that I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to set this up in the mill machine and use the digital readout using the arc contouring feature to cut this three inch radius on there, but that'll be later on. So, <coughs> excuse me. Last thing we're going to do is try to clean this inside up right there. This is where we're, we're getting into some internal cutting. So I got a different tool holder and a bar that's going to go into the machine to get in here and and cut this out so i got a lot of setting up i got to do and i'll bring you guys back once i have everything figured out and get it set up okay 
Well guys, I come to a stop. I applied the old A-bomb torque on this tool right here and it broke. See that? Absolutely just snapped. I don't feel like I was over tightening those bolts when it did that either. I was down here with the wrench, tighten them up and then snap. And that's what holds this bar that I was using. There was a tool bit that I had ground and this was going to go in there and that's what we were going to use to cut our inside right there. And this is the only one that I got. This is the one that a viewer had given me. I've got another one that takes a smaller bar, but I don't, I don't think I have a 15 16 bar. This one I like because it was inch and a half, a lot heavier. So I don't know where I'm at right now. I'm just getting kind of frustrated with this right here. I don't have all my setup, all the tooling that I need, and I'm learning on the fly. And it's just taking me longer than I wanted to spend on this thing. So I may end up just uh, forgetting shaping the inside of that thing because I need to get it done. And it's getting late. So I'm just going to end this evening in the shop right now so that I can uh, rest on it and think about what I want to do. So from the shaper, we took it to the American Pacemaker and set it up using the blocks and the shims there. And I drilled it board it and threaded it for two and a half inch 12 that's for the the rod end of the the hydraulic there so it screws on the end of the rod and just showing a couple pictures of the setup and the the bar and the threading and it turned out real good Used my shop made plug gauge there to check the thread and then now we're going to go over to the milling machine i'm just showing the end mill that i use that's a one inch diameter six inches long and i actually stood the clevis up in the vise and used the side mill method and was able to cut the entire thing at one time. I had to make a few passes through there, but it worked out real good. Next up, we're at the Kearns bore mill, and I'm drilling the hole through there, and then I'll set up the boring bar and actually bore the hole to the proper size. And if I remember correctly, that's a two and a half inch pin that goes through there. By the way, that's a two inch drill bit, a number five Morse taper, and that is one of the drill bits that a while back, I actually found a bunch of those at the flea market for a really cheap price. And I, clean them up, but uh, that's one of those drill bits, and it works really good on the board mill.
that's a half inch square high speed steel tool bit in that boring bar. I have it ground just like you would a turning tool, say a left handed turning tool for a lathe. It's the uh, same profile, it's got back rake, side rake, and it works really good on mild steel applications in that board mill. That's one of my favorite little test indicator setups for the mill to indicate a hole in. So I didn't get any video footage of this operation, but what I'm using is the arc contouring feature on the new all DP700 on the miller machine there. And I'm using a two inch roughing end mill. And once I get it programmed, it just you just walk it over using your XY coordinates, making a cut each time, bringing it to zero and you can set it for any radius and any amount of cuts you know so you can reduce the amount of steps that you see in the part there but it works really good for a manual operation of cutting radiuses in so the last step is to screw it onto the rod and uh, i drilled and tapped the uh, clevis by the way for a half inch set screw so i screwed it onto the rod nice and tight and set it back up in the milling machine and go right back to the center of that set screw hole and use a drill bit and actually dimple the rod so that the set screw will go down into the rod and lock and it won't allow the clevis to uh, screw either way you know back off and and uh, pull off of there so there it is dimpled and I deburred it really well with a scotch bright wheel to remove any of the burrs so it won't gall so there it is finished up